This is KGTV with Kyla Mustin, Josie Marshall, Abby Doyle, Elena Ma, Sports with the Davenports, and meteorologist Matt O'Connor. Welcome back. I'm Kyla Mustin. Breaking news from West Germany. Two years ago, President Reagan said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Ladies and gentlemen, it seems to be finally happening. The spokesman of East Berlin's Communist Party, Gunter Schabowski, has stated as of midnight tonight, Berlin time, citizens will be completely free to cross the border. It seems the catalyst for these events was the decision to end the Eastern Bloc during the pan-European picnic which occurred last August. Since the first section of the Iron Curtain fell, there has been a domino effect throughout the continent. We have Elena Mott live in West Berlin. Elena, can you expand on this? Sure, Kyla. It's 11 p.m. here in West Berlin with an extremely festive atmosphere. As of 15 minutes ago, the guards had started opening the checkpoints between East and West Berlin earlier than the midnight plan due to the massive crowd, allowing people to cross the borders with very little to no identity checks. Citizens aren't waiting around for heavy equipment. Some have come prepared with hammers and chisels to inflict any damage to the cement eyesore as humanly possible. It's people raised to think of their neighbors as enemies coming together for the common good. It seems the Cold War is finally beginning to thaw. This is Elena Mott for KGTV. A truly inspiring story. We'll talk to Elena again as more information comes in. Until then, let's move on with some stateside news. You know them, you love them, everyone's favorite married couple, it's sports with the Davenports. Good afternoon, sports fans. And welcome back to Sports with the Davenport. Today, what has now become the longest NBA game ever played happened between the Milwaukee Bucks and the Seattle Supersonics. If you weren't watching, you missed one heck of a game. Between them, two teams scored just over 300 points. And what is now not only the longest ongoing NBA game, but one of the highest scoring two, the official score being Supersonics 150 to Bucks 151. In this long and fast-paced game, Milwaukee led Seattle all the way into the fourth quarter, and so Seattle stepped up their game and tied them before the final buzzer. This led to five, yes, five overtimes. In the fifth overtime, the Bucks just narrowly outscored the Supersonics with a three-point shot taken by Ricky Pierce. Although Seattle lost, their starting point guard, Dale Ellis, made a whopping 59 points total, 22 points more than any player from either team. In my personal opinion, Seattle dominated the game and should have won by 15 or more points. The officials in this game were calling nothing but garbage against the Supersonics, causing the Buffs to gain nearly 20 points just from free throws. I'm sorry, dear, but I think that idea is just an attempt to excuse McMillan's inability to make a layup throughout the game. Perhaps if he made those missed layups, Seattle would have came out on top. Honey, obviously, that ref was blind and biased towards the Supersonics. They couldn't do anything to put points on the boards when the refs were making so many bad calls. Darling, it had nothing to do with the refs. Seattle's starting lineup is just inferior. Clearly, sweetheart, you know nothing about the sport. Seattle is ranked higher overall, and the Bucks just played a decent game for the first time ever. And who won the game? My love, Milwaukee. So clearly, the Bucks should be ranked higher than Seattle. Seattle has every reason to be outranking Milwaukee. More points overall, more rebounds, and those are just two stats. Seattle should be ranked exactly where they are, and that's higher than the Bucks. Fine. Come back next time for more sports with the Dotton Boards. Back to you, Kyla. One of these days, those two will agree on the outcome of a game. Let's keep on rolling and go over to the roller rink where we have Josie Marshall. Josie? Hello, folks. I'm here at the Groovin Roller Rink where they are holding the Rolling Into Memory Skatathon for Alzheimer's Awareness. This year's Skatathon is a little bit different. New this year, we have local roller derby team, the Rollin' Rats, battling against the Wheelie Wizards with all ticket proceeds going to the Alzheimer's Awareness Foundation. We have Wheelie Wizard team member Deanne Destruction here to talk with us about the fundraiser. Yeah, so it feels great doing something for a good cause. And I'm stoked to win this match. And we are all excited to see it. Now, can you tell us what your favorite part of today is? It's just great seeing all these kids having such a good time. And I'm excited to see some future derby races. Well, there you have it, folks! Uh, uh, are, are, are you out okay? Yep, I'm all good. This is Josie Marshall with KGTV. Um, hopefully Josie's okay and back on her feet soon. Maybe without the skates next time. We'll be back after these messages. Got a hot date? Photo shoot? Fashion show? School? 
but your hair just won't cooperate, try stuck up. Oh no, I'm not ready for my date. Don't split a hair, girlfriend. I've got stuck up. What's stuck up? The most amazing hairspray you'll ever use. Add some to get a teasing that's pleasing. Oh yes, girl. You'll get looks that shine because you'll look fine. <laughs> Wait a second. Have you been using stuck up? Sure have. Don't I look great? So girl, what's the best way to get that perfect look? It's stuck up. Do you want your body? Do you want to change your entire physique because you're shaped like a noodle? Yes. We have the solution. The only solution. Why we perfected 50 different delicious protein this We have double the strength of any other protein powder on the market. Double the sugar, double the thickness, double the vitamins, double the powerful protein, and double the minerals. You need to have the best work out of your life. See that young man over there? He used our Power Protein 3000 powder just once. Call the number on the screen in the next 15 minutes to get your first order for 15% off. Now yeah, that's power! Welcome back. As we reported earlier, the Berlin Wall is finally being brought down. Let's go back to Elena Mott, who is reporting live from West Berlin. The cranes and other machinery have finally arrived, and as you can see behind me, they are taking apart the wall piece by piece, and Kyla, we just learned that this wasn't even supposed to be happening. During his press conference, Shabowski actually misspoke concerning the timeline for when the checkpoints would be opening. Obviously, the German people have taken to heart this chance to reunite us. Is that David Hasselhoff? Back to you, Kyla. David! Thanks, Selena. What a monumental moment in history. Now let's look to the future and see how this week's weather will pan out with meteorologist Matt O'Connor. Good evening, folks. I hope you've had a rad Thursday so far. I'm Matt O'Connor, and I'm super excited you decided to tune back in. Hey, Kyla, knock, knock. Who's there, Matt? Accordion. Accordion who? According to the weather report, it's going to be a beautiful rest of the week. Today, with the sun shining down on us all day, we reached a high so far of 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Currently, it's 52, and by 7 p.m. we'll be dropping down to 40 degrees, with tonight's low being around 37. Friday, we'll see those temps going right back up, with a high of 59 and a low of 41 in the southern viewing areas. The northern counties will have a high closer to 55. This weekend will be much of the same, except we'll have cloudier skies with an average high of around 62 Saturday and 65 on Sunday. For your weekly forecast, as this is Iowa, prepare yourselves for some good news and some bad. While we're going to have a mostly pleasant weekend, check out this predicted temperature for Monday. 74 to 76 degrees in most areas of southeast Iowa as a warm front moves in. That's 13 degrees above our average temp. Having said that, this has been a warmer than usual November with less precipitation than we're used to. So if you have any work that needs to be done outside or you want to play hooky from work, Monday is your day because this little heat wave doesn't last long as Monday night drops down to 51 degrees then sits there with Tuesday not getting much warmer, reaching a high of only 52, and Wednesday down to 45. Adding insult to injury, Tuesday and Wednesday will not only be chilly, but rainy too, with scattered rain showers throughout both days. The sun will remain in hiding on Thursday, but at least we'll get a little break from the rain. Still wouldn't be a bad idea to bring a coat and umbrella. Kyla? Not a bad idea at all. Thanks, Matt. It's been a great evening for democracy, and I hope it's been just as enjoyable for you folks as it has been for us here at KGTV. Tune in tonight at 10 for updates on international and local news stories. See you soon.